have all the opportunities that you have had. The opportunity to study at a third level. The opportunity to get a job and earn a wage. Or simply the opportunity to be heard. Not everyone has the same access to such opportunities. This year at Enactus UL, our projects have focused on helping people create opportunity. No matter of age, background or status. We aspire to make a difference with people at our core. My name is Evie. My name is Elaine. My name is Jack. My name is Ruth. My name is Katrina. And together with Leanne on Tech, this is our story. This year we have worked on three projects and today we will present two of these projects in depth, SparkEd and Restart. Our story begins with our longest running and most impactful project, SparkEd. SparkEd started three years ago as a means to connect local secondary school students with local charities. Today it is much more than that. SparkEd is a youth leadership program that empowers young people to take their futures into their own hands by developing transferable self-leadership skills that will benefit them in further education, personal development and the workplace. Last year we piloted the program with 22 transition year students between two Limerick secondary schools. Following the success of the pilot we began in September with reflection and analysis. We conducted a thorough needs assessment with all of our stakeholders. We spoke to 110 transition year students, their teachers, our local community partners and new corporate partners. The, students, the transition year students told us that the school did not give them enough opportunities to expand skills such as communication and decision making. Also they expressed that they lacked confidence in public speaking. As a partner, Ono Sullivan, the senior site lead at Uber in Limerick, emphasised the importance of real experience when looking for employees, whether it be volunteer or professional. All of this shaped our SparkEd programme. Our SparkEd model is delivered in four stages. Stage one, workshops. As a SparkEd team, we delivered three workshops to each of our four partner schools. Using the earlier feedback, the workshops focus on a vast range of topics, such as volunteering, teamwork, decision-making skills, and the development of communication and interviewing skills. Stage two, volunteer opportunities. The transition years are empowered to put what they've learned from our workshops into practice by giving back to their local communities. The students volunteered with a number of local organizations such as the Red Cross and Clare's Wish Foundation. In total, our stu students amassed over 500 volunteer hours and raised over 2,000 euro for local charities, creating a real sense of added value in their communities. Stage three, SparkEd Showcase. This showcase took place in UL earlier this month. The day consisted of guest speakers delving into the world of innovation, entrepreneurship, and employability. Speakers included representatives from UL, City, Uber, and many more. The bulk of the day was dedicated to the transition year students' own presentations, again utilising what they had learned from our workshops. They were tasked with presenting on their volunteer experience and one chosen sustainable development goal in front of a panel of judges made up of our partners. The day was an overwhelming success, encapsulating a true spirit of social entrepreneurship. Stage four, work experience. Last year, at national competition, feedback from judges suggested linking with more local employers. This year, four of our students will be presented with an amazing opportunity of two weeks work experience in Uber Centre of Excellence in Limerick. One of the students has already gained a work experience in UL Law Department. Over the last year, we expanded the programme into two new secondary schools, one of those being our first STESH school. We grew our student base by 500% and in total we impacted and empowered 110 transition year students across four secondary schools in two counties. We also have a second desk school signed up for next year, showing the incredible demand for SparkEd. SparkEd is a revenue generating social enterprise. Our business plan was tweaked using last year's experience of running our pilot programme. We calculated a 15 euro per head price for our non-desh schools and a subsidised price of 6 euro per head for our desh schools, ensuring equal opportunity for all students. 
Sparkhead has generated €1,190 Euro in revenue this year. The costs of the project were €702, Euro, leaving us with a profit of €487, Euro, making it financially sustainable. <laughs> We also won funding from Citibank of €1,840, Euro, which will help the expansion of SparkEd. We had great feedback from this year's Transition Year students. It's helped us build a lot more confidence than we had before and it's taught us skills within interviews and presentations that we wouldn't have had if we had in this course. I'm confident now I'm presenting PowerPoints in front of people. I feel more confident just talking in front of a group of people instead of like putting my head down and like I feel like I can look at people that I get embarrassed. Students clearly enjoy and benefit from the Spark Ed programme, but we want to make sure it has a lasting impact. This involves discussions of a longitudinal study with lecturers in UL, so that we can touch base with the students and improve Spark Ed's long-term impact, continuing to spark the light for a brighter future. Our story continues with our second project, Restart. Ireland for decades has established itself as one of the friendliest faces in the world. The crack the kill and an openness to diversity. It's what we're known for. But when asylum seekers come to this country, looking for a new home, their introduction to Ireland is far from crack and kill. As of 2019, the number of people claiming asylum in Ireland has increased by 26%, reaching the highest level over a decade. Asylum seekers do not have the same opportunities as you or I. They are treated as second-class citizens, living in subpar conditions on €38.80 Euro a week. Combine this with the uncertainty of not knowing when the state of limbo in direct provision will end. This is not a livelihood. The average length of time a person lives in direct provision is approximately two years minimum. Two years of isolation and endless waiting. We can't change the direct provision system, but we can empower an improvement in the residents' livelihoods. We wanted to address these issues in direct provision and make an impact in the lives of people who are living in direct provision centres. We did a need assessment, spoke to the asylum seekers, heard their stories, and we formed relationship with these three direct provision centres in Limerick. From the 33 people we surveyed, there was a clear opportunity to build key employability skills such as customer service and cash management. There was also a need for access to integrated social opportunities such as cooking and gardening. Putting our entrepreneurial heads together, we created Restart Cooking. Restart aims to integrate refugees and asylum seekers into the Irish community through various initiatives with a primary focus on fresh food vendor enterprise Restart Cooking. In November, we partnered with Country Munch, a local catering startup, and ran our first food stall. A mix of people between direct provision and an Actus UL came together and cooked, producing authentic food from Bahrain and Zimbabwe. In conjunction, we ran a workshop that outlined the key elements of managing a food stall, including accounting, branding, and customer service to address the express needs. From February, we ran a food stall in the University of Limerick market once a week for six consecutive weeks, with an average revenue of €75 Euro per day. In April, we were commissioned with our first paid catering event, and this year, Restart has earned a revenue of €685. Euro. Within this time, we empowered eight residents of direct provision. And here's what Adele has to say. The program has uh, given us the opportunity to integrate with a lot of people in university and it brings people together actually. You get to know and to meet a lot of people and I hope it will grow. So. This is only the beginning. Again, inspired by our needs assessment and a desire for environmental sustainability, we created Restart Gardening. We acquired land in one of the direct provision centres and received gardening equipment through Old McDermott at RTE to FM. Residents of the centre, along with Anactus UL members, have started working on the land this month in order to create our first restart garden. This garden will be a place of escapism and act as a positive outlet for the mental health of residents. Integration is the core of Restart, and with each initiative we continue to build a united community. 
Think of all the opportunities that you have had. This year at Enactus UL, our projects have provided opportunities for all. Through SparkEd, we are empowering young people to become leaders within themselves and their community, while guiding them through skill development to ignite their future careers. Restart is creating opportunities for other asylum seekers to upskill and integrate them through the Irish community, through gardening and cooking. Our third and newest project, Moya Nua, despite its infancy, already has international recognition, winning in the Citibank's Pathways to Progress competition and becoming the first global champions of the WTCA's Peace Through Trade competition, as featured on Forbes. Moya Nua aims to improve the lives of the 1.5 billion people in smallholder farms worldwide who are plagued by the inefficiency and backbreaking pain caused by traditional hand planting methods subjected to them. Moya Nua's solution, a handheld seed planter that is simply designed using locally sourced materials. This groundbreaking innovation along with NGOs such as Irish Aid will empower individuals and improve the health and well-being in impoverished areas. Every age, nationality and background deserves opportunity. We at Enactus seek out opportunity and equality. We use entrepreneurial action to improve livelihoods. This year we have made more partnerships, created more sustainable models and impacted more people. Inspired by a meeting 13 of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. With our 160 members across our three social enterprises. We have put in a collective 6,000 Hours. Generating a revenue of 5,550. 5, Empowering 129 people, and together we, we are an Actus UL. With the Sparkhead project, other than the TY students paying a per head contribution or a pay head ticket price to get into it, have you considered any other business models for the scalability of Sparkhead? Uh, the students pay the 15 euro each and we have the 6 euro subsidised for the DESH schools. Um, this covers, these costs cover the um, cost of the programme which would include the workshop costs and the showcase costs. But we have one funding because we took part in the Citibank's Pathway to Progress. So this funding is going to be used for the expansion of the project in the future. Can you explain how the um, Restart Gardening program generates revenue and is sustainable into the future? Restart Gardening is actually good for mental health one and also in terms of sustainability we are aiming that by next year this time we'll be able to harvest the fruit the crops that would have grown in the garden and also will be able to sell those fruits or make the food since we already have a store so we'll be able to sell the crops that we have created from the garden and make profit from it. We'll be able to generate revenue from that. Perfect, just on the Spark Ed um, one, um, just to even just gauge a little bit of feedback from the teachers, obviously uh, work experience and promoting volunteerism would happen a lot at TY levels, so what would be kind of some of the, the things that teachers would have said they see as slightly different in, in, in your program, your initiative? Uh, what keeps uh, Sparkit unique is the fact that the students are at the core of it and they get out of it what they want. And our four stages put together, programs have these stages as separate, but all four together, it's what attracts the teachers and they believe it's very valuable for the students to participate in it. Can I follow up on the restart program and look at the, the current activities and you had revenues of 685 and eight refugees empowered. Did any of the, the revenue go to the, uh, to the refugees and what costs were involved in that program and how do you envisage it growing and scaling up? Um, I Okay, uh, the revenue is generated from one, we had a first store on Dece in December during the Christmas market in the milk market in Limerick. So that was part of the revenue that where it came from. The costs that were involved, it was transport because these direct provision centers, they are located in outer skates of Limerick. So there is no transport to get them into the university or into the city itself. So we had to actually get transport for them. And the money that we are generating, we still
still have, we had to cover costs like the tents and a startup like fixed assets, things that you don't have to rebuy in the next semester. So the money is going to go towards their courses after they have acquired 60 hours of volunteering, we are able to fund their cost per person. Depending on how many hours you have put into the project, we are able to fund your cost of your choice. Hi, um, I just want to ask about the Spark Out as well. Um, have you got feedback from the actual charities um, from the impact the student volunteering has had? The chari so last year when our pilot program, we only had one charity involved, which was the Limerick Gateway Edu Education Homework Club for Disadvantaged Youth. And this year we've added several more. Our TYs have participated across over 10 organisations and we've had great feedback because some of these organisations didn't have enough volunteers. The Homework Club, for example, was in threat of being shut down, but because our, our TYs have done um, regular volunteering there weekly, it's now the students are still able to attend. Thanks. In relation to SparkEd, the costs, can you give me the breakdown between the cost of uh, those costs, how much of it is in materials and how much is associated with labour in terms of delivering the programme? So the Spark Guide costs are d divided into two elements. The first would be the workshop expenses and the second would be our showcase expenses. The workshop expenses um, mainly consist of transport to the schools and there's also some supply expenses. But then our showcase would be um, expenses such as food and prizes. But that again can be scaled, scaled back depending on the amount of revenue that's in the project for the year. Hi, have you guys any plans to, to scale the Spark Guide programme across Ireland? Uh, yes, we have. So this semester we um, ran the programme in four schools over one semester. For next year our plan is to run it for um, two semesters, meaning we can double the amount of schools and we're hoping to expand to other counties within that. Uh, for Restart, uh, how did you fund the acquisition of the land and if you don't own it and you're leasing it, do you have it for a limited period of time? Uh, it's actually, we are not leasing it or anything like that. It's one of the direct provision centers in Limerick. So they have enough land. So we had conversation with the manager in the center and talk about the mental health, how it could be a direct impact and a huge impact to the residents because they face things like depression and all stuff like that. So instead of just having the land, we thought that we should put it into use and use it. Sorry, thank you. 